Hello folks and welcome to this week's review and we're looking at a pair of headphones from Edifier Stroke Stacks and I'll explain what that means, what that's all about in a moment. And before we go any further, before we get to the closer look section, I just want to do a little bit of background just to explain these headphones. So if you want to skip ahead, you can nip down to the description. There are some hot links, some chapter headings, and you can navigate around this video to your heart's content. But for now, let's just look at a bit of background. Now, I'm a big admirer of Stax, the Japanese headphones people. I actually own two pairs of the electrostatic models, the SR202 basic electrostatic headphones, plus the SRM212 driver unit, and the rather higher end SR007A electrostatic headphones with the valve energizer called the SRM007T. Now, I personally consider the brand to be the pinnacle of headphone design. I know there'll be arguments out there, but I like them when they are driven properly and correctly, of course, and that's not always the case. I was thus um, concerned, you might say, when I heard that the original Japanese brand had been bought way back in 2012 for just under the equivalent of £1.12 million, in this case, to the Chinese company Edifier. Now, Edifier is probably best known for its low-cost powered speakers, but it does offer a range of other products, including communication headsets, gaming earphones, earbuds, AV speakers, computer speakers, and the rest. Now, the early concerns that I had about this sale were not just reserved to myself, I have to say. There was, at least in our little corner of the techie industry, a bit of an outcry. To such an extent that President and CEO of Edifier, Wendong Zhang, decided to go on record. And he said, and I quote, Stacks should and will remain as I intend it to be, that of an independent operation retaining the current team, including Mr. Yozo Meguro, then Stacks president, and two, retaining at all times the brand integrity that Stacks has created and built over the years, with products to be continued and to be designed and manufactured in Japan. Edifier's Zhang also talked about Edifier's new investment in Stacks as a company in terms of research and development, which was all good news. He further sought the assurance of concerned audiophiles by adding, and I quote, the Stax brand will certainly not disappear, as many acquired brands these days are apt to do. Again, more good news for fans of Stax. Now, when I heard of all of that, I thought, great, all well and good, and then I promptly lost touch with Stax. Until now. So, what we have here is a new pair of, well, for Stax at any rate, extraordinarily modern-looking fold-away headphones that are shock and horror, wireless. The second shock for me is that these headphones are not electrostatic. They use planner drivers. Picking up a pair of headphones from this venerable hi-fi brand, famed for basing its entire design ethos on a niche and complex and complicated driver technology, and then realizing these new headphones are wireless, and driven by planars and running on Bluetooth, it's a bit like buying a Morris Minor and finding that they have electric windows. It takes a moment to get your head around it. It also took a moment to visually take in a pair of Stax headphones with the Edifier name printed twice on the chassis. What we have here is an example of Edifier's Stax Spirit line of products. A meeting of minds, you might say, a cooperative product based around the Stax expertise. The Stax Spirit line is different and separate from the ear speaker classic designs you will find from Stax. In fact, there's an entire different website devoted to the electrostatic products from Stax. So again, in case any Stax fans are concerned, the electrostatic headphones appear, from what I can see, to be 
a different entity from this line of Spirit headphones. I suppose you could say this is a way for stacks to dip their toes into the lifestyle market without causing too many ripples amongst their core audience. So before we go any further, I think we need to take a closer look. And welcome to the Closer Look section for the Edifier Stax Spirit S3 headphones. And I would like you to welcome back Arthur, my executive producer. Long-term fans of this channel will remember Arthur from oh, way back. I did a review of some T plus A headphones. He made his debut in that video and hasn't been seen since. You've heard of the man with no name? Well, here's the man with no body. The headphones themselves arrive in a sturdy box, which itself arrives in a hard outer folio slipcase, while the headphones themselves sit inside alongside a USB cable, an auxiliary cable, a converter plug to change from 3.5mm wired connection to a 6.35mm connection, and you also get a manual that appears to have fallen out of a Christmas cracker. It's so small. Good luck reading this one, by the way. I had to call my local university and borrow the electron microscope just to scan the text. The online version is much preferred. You also get a second pair of replaceable ear pads offering a lighter mesh-like alternative design instead of the fitted heavier lambskin default. Alongside that is a weird little ear pad tool that looks like a guitar pick. This dinky little thing helps you to remove and swap out the ear pads. The ear pads themselves click in and off the main chassis with a bit of effort, but not too much. There are four snap fittings on each ear pad, which I found relatively easy to maneuver, but more on that later on. The hard plastic chassis encourages you to fold the ear cups up to be then twisted 90 degrees for final storage. The mechanism itself, well, that feels pretty solid. On the head, meanwhile, as Arthur will be able to attest, I'm sure, the headphones feel very comfortable indeed. Now, I have a massive head, not to hold a massive brain, as you might think, but I use the extra space to store a spur Coke tin and a packet of peanuts. But even on my expansive bonds, the Spirit S3s felt very comfortable indeed. Now, as I say, this is a Planar-based driver headphone design, but I was intrigued to hear that the drivers were licensed from Odyssey. And incidentally, that's how you pronounce this word. It's not, as I thought, Ordees. I do recall visiting the Odyssey stall at a hi-fi show going back a few years, and I said to the guy behind the counter, so what's new for Ordees? And there was silence, and he looked at me. And then he told me it's pronounced Odyssey. But enough of my failings. The S3s here, well, they support Bluetooth 5.2 over a maximum distance of 10 meters. The codecs include AptX, AptX Adaptive, AptX Voice, and AptX HD. Plus, were supported Snapdragon sound, which is new to me. There is, I'm afraid, no LDAC. Here, you can hook the S3s to two Bluetooth devices. This means you could connect them to a computer and your phone if you wish, if you would like to take calls from the phone, for example. In my case, I found them handy because I connected the headphones to my iPhone to control EQs via the supplied app, plus a separate digital audio player, which actually controlled the music. More on this app later on. Oh, and if your wireless battery dies, you can still use the S3s wired via the included cable. Again. More on this later on. There are three controls on the S3's chassis. You get volume up and down, which can also be used as next and previous track. Hold both together for a factory reset and for pairing mode. Between the two buttons is a raised third button, which you can use for power on and off, or play pause, or changing the sound mode, or enabling the game mode EQ, and also for launching your phone's voice assistant. 
Just to be clear, the Spirit S3 headphones do not support active noise cancelling, although the ear pads themselves do provide decent noise cancelling all on their own. You can charge these headphones for a final playtime of around 80 hours off that single charge, and that charge actually takes around an hour and a half. There is a 10 minute fast charge though, which will still give you around 10 hours or more of use. And that's your closer look section, but how do these things actually sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome to the sound quality tests for the Edifier Stax Spirit S3 wireless headphones. To begin, I wirelessly paired the headphones to my iPhone, loaded the YouTube music app, and played the track The Word Girl via Scritty Politti, the song with the rather wonderful bass guitar line. This was a stream running at, last time I looked anyway, 256k AAC. First impression, well, bass was strong, but this song is all about the bass line. Even so, the S3 never swamped the soundstage with it. Firstly, the bass itself had a measure of complexity. It didn't offer a blobby type of bass tone. Secondly, the bass backed off enough to allow a measure of space to roam the soundstage. This meant that the mid-range detail had lots of room to maneuver. The vocals were the first to benefit, adding a measure of agility and delicacy. Percussion provided varying shades now, while the reggae-like rhythm guitar provided a metal shine, while secondary percussion now had a greater say within the mix. Next up, well, I connected the S3s to my MacBook, and I'll pause there. Why? Well, this is an achievement all on its own, because not all Bluetooth-capable hi-fi even manages to get that far with my laptop. The S3, though, well, that had no issues. On my laptop, I loaded up Audivana, the music-playing software, and I played Elvis Presley, who sang the track The Girl of My Best Friend at DSD64. Now, this is a pair of wireless capable headphones, let me remind you. I do find this genre of headphones to offer less air and space in the mids. They can be a little claustrophobic in their approach too, and they can lack a little bit of detail. The quality of the sound from the S3s were well, not up there with the best wired designs in this price point. But for wireless designs, they offered some of the best sonics I've heard in a long time. Playing the police's message in a bottle at also DSD64, there was a real sense of maturity in the mids here. That is, the mid-range offered plenty of information and sounded very confident. Sometimes wireless headphones can sound a little tentative and weedy, but not here. Sure, the firm bass foundation from the Spirit S3s certainly helped, but there was enough tonal realism up top to put a smile on your face. I then paired the headphones to my Astral and Kern Can Alpha, and I used the Aptex HD codec, and I played the Dove's Universal Want at 24-bit 96K. Now, I must add at this point that the headphones are pretty easy to drive. I tried pushing the same music via my Sennheiser 4.50 wireless headphones, for example, and I had to add a heap more gain to find the same volume on those. So, low power amplifiers should be fine for the Edifier Stax design. Now, I was impressed by the early piano rendition on this track, which sounded large, resonant, and dominant. The piano, per se, is a chaotic machine in sound terms and takes a lot for a device to control it. The Edifier Staxes did a great job. Bass guitar was bouncy and full of impact. Lead guitar bristled and crackled with electricity. Percussion provided a deep bass thump, while the lead vocal, well, it emoted all over the soundstage. In short, this high energy track had the head bobbing and weaving, and the knee was bouncing, and I was doing a pretty fair impression of air drumming. You really had to be there. Now there are switches in the app which allows you to reassign the button commands on the headphones. There are also two primary EQ settings assigned 
to each pair of ear pads. And they include the following. If you fit the lambskin ear pads, these are the pads that arrive default fitted out of the box, and you select the EQ called leather earmuffs, and that's what it says on the app, well, that adds a measure of bass emphasis. Switching to ice feeling earmuffs, oh yes, well, this adds a focus to the bass, losing a little bit of lower bass actually, hardening the upper bass and placing a slight edge on the mid-range. So if you remove the ear pads and you replace them with those mesh type alternatives, what you get is this. Well, your ears feel a lot cooler, firstly. So yeah, you do get that icy feeling. Secondly, well, with these new ear pads fitted, I did notice that the gain had to be increased to get to the same volume. So these ear pads must be rather more opaque in sonic terms. So switching to the leather earmuffs EQ, bass was rather recessed, mid-range a little rolled off, and the overall presentation was a little subdued. Switching to the ice feeling earmuffs EQ, well, the extra emphasis of this EQ pushed the frequencies harder against these ear pads, these mesh ear pads, and the overall sound was more balanced now. Sure, certain mid-range crescendos could be a little sharp, being slightly higher than the upper mids. However, the soundstage was quite broad. In the end, I did feel that these ear pads veiled more of the final sound, and that the S3s had to try harder to reach your ears. I preferred the original leather ear pads. The latter appeared to be more transparent. Bottom line on the ear pad issue, well, Try both yourself and try all of the available EQs with each earpad type before you settle on your preferred sound. Staying with the app, and yes, there are more EQs if you swipe the screen to the left, and you will see three more Classic, Hi Fi, and Stacks. Classic was the default, which I've been listening to all along, so that was sorted. But changing to the Hi Fi EQ, well, that seemed to place emphasis on the vocals. It thinned the mid-range, it reduced the bass response, and it really sounded like a sort of voice mode. The Stax EQ pushed the music into a flat response. It pulled the bass back into the mix and created a much more neutral, even presentation. Now, some will dislike the lack of sonic excitement from this mode. Others will prefer it for the perceived extra realism. I felt, well, rather torn myself switching between one and the other. I personally will need more time to decide, but even so, I think both modes are worthy of your consideration. You can swipe that screen once more, and then you enter into something called game mode. This is yet another EQ. This EQ places lots of emphasis on the mids, and, well, it is aimed at gamers, so I quickly discounted this option for music listening. Now these are wireless headphones, they're not wired headphones, but there is a backup wired option. The cable you're given for this wired backup, well, it's functional, it's a bit weedy. Even so, in wired mode, which as I say is only really a backup, I still thought the S3s sounded more coherent. The sound was sensibly structured with a newfound realism, but hey, that's wired versus wireless for you. In fact, just going off on a slight tangent, I'd like to see a dedicated wired version of these headphones with, say, an added balanced option as part of the feature mix. I'm convinced they would make a pretty devastating option to, say, the Sennheiser 660Ss, for example. But even here, connected via this weedy 3.5mm terminator cable, they sounded pretty proficient to me. Neutral, insightful, full of detail with a smooth, effortless mid-range performance. So how do I conclude the review of the Edifier Stax Spirit S3 wireless headphones? Well, let me give you a few final thoughts, then I'll give you some pros and cons, and then a rating. I 
wasn't quite sure what to expect. Stacks in the age of modernity? Whatever next. But in terms of wireless headphone design, I think the Edifier Stax Spirit S3 headphones, I think they're a bit of a triumph. They work very well indeed. They're comfortable, connect to devices very quickly, offer a useful app. There's those ear pad choices, and most importantly for wireless play, an excellent sound response. I like the Spirit S3 headphones a lot. And on that note, pros and cons. In the good section, I like the compact design. They're sturdy, they're also strong. They feel as though they're gonna last. Secondly, ease of connection. These headphones were just desperate to connect to any device you had handy. Next, bass. There was a certain strength to the bass. The lower frequencies sounded massy and hefty. I liked the EQ options as well. They gave a lot of choice to the final sound. Finally, the detailed mids. They were relatively open and spacious for wireless headphones. My sole gripe for these headphones was the terribly dinky, tiny, small, insignificant, hard to read manual. But that's not gonna put me off giving the Spirit S3s an award, cause that's what I'm gonna do. This one gets an eight and also a groovy award. Congratulations to Edifier and Stax. And that's your lot, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And if I can ask you down below, if you could possibly do me a favor, click on the subscribe and like buttons. Just helps this channel to grow. Down below further in the description, there are links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Also my website, which has all kinds of stuff you don't find in this channel and my Patreon channel, which is now a hub for everything I do. Everything, social media, websites, here, whatever I get up to will now appear on Patreon. Patreon, as I say, is a hub. Plus it has its own unique and exclusive material over there. I will be back on Friday with... I ain't sure actually, because with Christmas approaching, there's gonna be a little bit of shuffling about. You're still gonna find hi-fi music, etc. But there may be occasions where it turns up on a Monday and not a Friday. We'll see. So I hope to have your company then. Until that time, folks. Bye-bye for now.